My name is Bonnie Evangelista, and I'm in the Acquisition Directorate within the CDAO, Chief Digital and AI Office. I'm going to be talking about an initiative within CDAO called Tradewind, and this is more of an enabling environment where we're trying to find solutions either better, faster, quicker, cheaper. We're just trying things a little bit differently. And within the Tradewind environment, there's some enabling pathways and methodologies that we're using that I'm going to talk to you that might be helpful in your ventures as well. The CDAO was formally stood up in around June of 2022. It's made up of four different organizations, one being the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, the Jake, that's my former organization. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the genesis of Tradewind, which was initially a Jake initiative and a few slides later. And there's also the Advana platform, the Chief Data Office and Defense Digital Services, along with the Jake, all have come together now and we have formed what is now referred to as the CDAO, Chief Digital and AI Office. So now Tradewind is housed out of this office and we are operating under the CDAO direction. My personal mission within Tradewind is to ensure that we are acquiring solutions differently than we have done this more traditionally within the department. This means getting a bleeding edge and emerging tech within the hands of soldiers much, much faster. How did Tradewind first start? Again, I mentioned this has been, it started as a Jake initiative, Joint Artificial Intelligence Center. The mission within the Jake was to expedite the delivery of AI solutions to the warfighter. Now our mission set under CDAO has expanded to digital and data solutions as well as AI solutions. However, the principles or the foundations that were created under Jake direction have not changed very much. So in 2018, the Jake was officially stood up. Tradewind didn't stand up, or when I say stand up, we didn't ramp up activity under Tradewind until about 2021, when we started implementing some of the first methodologies and models uh, that were being discussed or brainstormed amongst the, the core team at that time. And it wasn't until this year in 2022 when we really started take we had a lot of lessons learned and we, we started taking a little bit more intentional action under Tradewind and started piecing together more items where we actually started creating more of an ecosystem, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later as well. So I want to talk about the two primary problems that the Tradewind initiative is aiming to solve. I mentioned that there Tradewind is very much an enabling concept, and I'm going to talk a little bit how how it's enabling in, in the next few slides. But really, one of the biggest problems that we recognize at the CDAO is that there is just too much red tape. Everyone knows this. Everyone recognizes it. In particular, when it comes to contracting, contracting pathways and procurement lead times, everyone recognizes it's too long, it's too rigid, and it's not very flexible. Those within industry tell us all the time that the barriers to entry are very high sometimes, especially for small businesses or startups. We recognize this as well. One of the things, whether we like to admit it or not, but we're still using very antiquated workflows or mediums such as emails and we have no automated processes and this is also creating some of the the slowness that you might feel in the government when when there's because there's a lot of red tape there's forms you got to fill out manually there's a lot of paperwork that goes back and forth these are some of the things we're dealing with and that we're trying to address within Tradewind. Another area, I think this is maybe even more critical than there's too much red tape, is there's not enough environments for problem solving. Um, that might be a foreign concept to you. It's hopefully under Tradewind, whether you it's Tradewind or not, you start to feel or start to shift your mindset to allow solution providers to give you solutions rather than satisfy requirements. Um, in general, when especially in the procurement field world that I live in, we are making very important investment decisions based on a confidence rating. There's usually not enough real data 
on performance to actually gauge whether something is a good investment or not. And because we're so siloed, data access is very difficult. And because data cannot flow very easily or, or there's just no access to certain types of data, we've created large technical barriers for industry. So they can't even figure out if their solution's a good fit for us because we're not really communicating with them in their language, whether that's within code or within certain types of data. Another thing that we try to do within Tradewind is how do we create these environments where people are solving problems instead of, again, just meeting a requirement that may or may not solve a problem. The main thing I'm going to talk about in this presentation are, are major lines of effort that we've chosen to try to do things differently. Because of the, the barriers I mentioned within the contracting lane, we have made very intentional efforts to buy things faster. And I'm going to talk about some of those contracting pathways that we're doing that. And how they're maybe a little bit different, novel, or unique than what you might be used to. And then I'm going to talk about how we're trying to grow an ecosystem within Tradewind. And then I'm not going to talk about in this presentation, but I wanted to highlight that we are prototyping AI-powered and automated business tools. It's so early in our prototyping phases, I don't have anything yet to reveal, but that is another line of effort that we are working under Tradewind. So the first contracting pathway that I want to talk about is something called the Tradewind Solutions Marketplace. This is a competitive playground that we've created amongst industry where instead of pushing requirements out to industry, we are pulling solutions into the DOD. We are asking industry to submit a five minute video on their solution and how they think their solution solves a DOD problem. And we have a platform under tradewindai.com where the videos are being housed and we consider all of the videos to be in a post-competitive environment. So all of the videos before they enter the marketplace are, or are assessed for technical merit and we're using a lot of authorities and tools that already exist in the contracting world to enable this competitive playground. What this means for industry is super low barrier to entry. All we're asking for is a five minute video, it does not have to be major production. It could be videotaped on your phone or doing something very similar to what I'm doing here today. And because we've made intentional effort to comply with a lot of competition requirements, that any video that you see in the marketplace is considered to be awardable under the FAR, Federal Acquisition Regulation Authorities, or non-FAR authorities. So that gives you a very powerful enabling tool or mechanism to buy things. If you're browsing in the marketplace and you see something you like, you, like, you have the ability to just to go to the vendor and buy without doing a JNA or any kind of sole source action, being in the marketplace is considered competitive. So it's, again, this is a little bit of a novel approach to buying solutions in the government. And we think it's gonna be a powerful disruptor on how we do business. The second contracting pathway that we rely heavily on are prototyping challenges where we're leveraging something called other transaction authority. This is a non-FAR based technique or tool that we use in order to have maximum flexibility and speed. This is where we can create our own journey, meaning we get to create our own competitive process in order to find the right solution to our problem. Usually we are using a two phase down select process where there's a paper round and then there's a pitch round and then we make an investment decision or a business decision after, after the pitch round. And we're trying to leverage certain tools within the Tradewind environment that will help us go faster, essentially. One of those tools is called the Tradewind Exchange, which I'll talk a little bit more about in a couple slides. But prototyping challenges in general can, sometimes they have unique circumstances depending on what's going on with the, the mission need or, or the customer or client that we're working with. In general, though, we post all of the prototype challenge opportunities on tradewindai.com, so you can browse those at any time. You do have access to them yourselves if you register as a government user. 
or you can try to work with us and do something novel yourself. One of my favorite contracting pathways is the commercial solutions opening, CSO. This is another novel authority that I think is underutilized within the Department of Defense in particular. This is also using a merit-based approach similar to the Tradewind Solutions Marketplace, where if you find merit in something that you see within the CSO, then you're allowed to go directly to the solution provider and buy. So our CSO is called TriAI. This was initiated under Jake Joint Artificial Intelligence Center as well. Um, but this is the concept with this was let's try it before we buy it. So we usually come up with either non-monetary or other low cost risk arrangements, like maybe a 30, 60, 90 day technical demonstration. And we want to find success in that short time boxed period of time before we make a longer term investment. The other benefit to this methodology or this mechanism is that there is the ability to do follow on efforts directly with the vendor if you find success, very similar to other transaction authority. One of the last contracting pathways that we are building within the Tradewind environment are a number of digital and AI services and tools. Currently we have BOAs and BPAs, those are basic ordering agreements and blanket purchase agreements for multiple different categories. One is data readiness, the other is test and evaluation, and lastly, AI talent or basically subject matter expertise with regard to artificial intelligence type competencies. Now, these pathways are still current, even though the contracts are established, we're still trying to build the right pathways and workflows for very quick ordering. And we're going to be leveraging things like the Tradewind Exchange in order to do that. The Tradewind Exchange is our virtual meeting place where we're able to share information, collect and share information, but it's also kind of the foundation of the Tradewind environment where there's a backbone there that enables us to collect, share, or engage on a regular basis for multiple different purposes. One feature where we are doing such things is through sourcing and scouting. CDA was currently using this in order to find companies to have conversations about technology and we're able to also find and curate data about different companies that we're interested in. And we're also looking at how to use this feature in order to invite companies to certain challenges that we think should be at the table. Another interesting element of the Tradewind Exchange is we're able to create something called a community of interest. This is where as we find groups of companies or people that we just want to engage on a regular basis with, we can create a specific community around that and, and do that very thing. You might start seeing communities of interest around some of those life cycle support services that I mentioned earlier, where we have a community of interest just for uh, the AI talent, BPA holders as an example, or something like that. And then lastly, one of the major features within the trade and exchange that we're utilizing on a day-to-day -day basis is the challenge manager. This is where in order to broadcast and manage the prototype challenges that I mentioned previously as one of the contracting pathways is we're doing it through this, through the trade win exchange. And it's allowing us to not just provide a public place to let people know that we're looking for solutions, but we're able to manage the workflows. So that's everything from collection of solution, proposed solutions through evaluations and providing feedback to vendors. It's all being kind of housed and managed within the trade win exchange. And through all of this, we, we believe we are creating an ecosystem where you have data and information being shared on a regular basis, but more importantly, you're engaging with people maybe that you haven't engaged with before. And that's where we believe innovation can happen. I want to share a few stories with you on how we believe we're making an impact or where I want to show we are trying to do something differently. And we were able to execute either rapidly or using a novel methodology or something that we think is pro profound enough to demonstrate some level of success. The first story I want to share shows how we were able to curate a lot of solutions 
and, and into a couple investment decisions in a pretty reasonable timeline. As you can see from the timeline on the bottom, we were able to make a ward in 83 calendar days, which is not bad. But if you look at the top, the boxes at the top, we went from 56 white paper submissions down to 10 interviews or pitch sessions in order to make two prototype awards. And if you look at the actual timeline, it wasn't the contracting process that actually was slow. It was the government took a really, really long time. And when I say really long time, I mean, <clears throat> it looks like it took about somewhere between 45 and 60 days to make a decision. So here we were able to demonstrate the contracting process went really fast and we had a little bit of work to do maybe in our internal decision making, which is what uh, slowed award and execution in this instance. Story two is a little interesting. Not only were we able to execute more quickly, but we were doing something very different here. So rather than looking for a specific solution to a problem, we were looking for industry to help us create an environment. So, and we called it a problem solving environment. And this specifically was in support of software development and how to uh, do some very software factory-esque type things. Like how do you create, deliver and produce software into production very, very quickly. and how do you bring expertise in and out of an environment in order to enable you to do that, especially as conditions within the environment are changing? So this is a very unusual or unique, you choose the word, problem set where we were looking for some help. So we did the, the same, we used a prototype challenge contracting pathway. We did the, the usual white paper pitch down two phase down select and we went from 40 to 11 in order to make a decision and we were able to execute in 43 days in this instance and again i think the timeline shows at the bottom that most of the time spent was in negotiating and awarding the project um, again this one was a little bit unique so there was a little bit more to discuss the last story i want to share is where we made an award in under 30 days and we used, we did a couple novel things in order to accelerate in this instance. If you look at the timeline, again, this is another prototyping challenge that we did where we were, again, I think this is a, a little bit unique as well in terms of the problem set. We were looking to create a program where we can build a little bit of a pipeline into government workforce by allowing college students to have a security clearance. And we were looking for partners to do that. So we had, we used the white paper pitch two phase down select in, the, in this instance, but in this time we were much more prepared going into negotiations where we had prepped a lot of materials and baselined a lot of terms and conditions to allow things like round table sessions with all of the stakeholders. So once a decision was made after the pitch, we immediately went into a round table discussion to talk about what was the scope of the project and what was the cost of the project and then any terms and unique terms and conditions that we had to negotiate and all of those things combined accelerated us to award in under 30 days to add a little context to what i'm talking about with tradewind i wanted to share the growth that we've experienced utilizing the methodologies i've described and applying the lessons learned that we've observed over the last couple years so I, I mentioned again in 2021, that's when trade would really started making some moves, started to ramp up activity. And the first, I would say nine months of activity, there was very little project execution. As you see, there's only $2.5 million of project awards. And then it was really the following six months where or so where we saw a lot more movement and we started getting a lot more confident in what we were doing. And we saw $31.1 million in awards amongst 12 different projects. And then it was really the last six months of fiscal year 2022, where we, we got a little bit more aggressive with some of these enabling path contracting pathways that I discussed previously. And we saw a total of $87.8 million in 
between May and September of 2022 alone. It was a very aggressive six months. Um, and as you can see, things are trending in the right direction. And we hope that a, a lot of these enabling concepts are just going to continue to make an impact. So if anything that I've talked about has resonated with you, uh, there's a couple things you can do right now to get connected and start engaging with us. You can join, go to tradewindai.com, join the exchange. Um, there's a lot of different areas where you can you can play around with some of the tools we're built, the prototyping tools we're building. If you go there, look for uh, under the resources tab, there might be within the exchange, there's an element called submit my AI problem where you can try to build a, a problem statement from nothing using our AI powered contract writing capability. Or if you want to do your own sourcing and searching within TradeWin or within the exchange, you can do that as well. Or you can try to run your own challenge. All of that is available to you, as well as the Solutions Marketplace, which is the Solutions Marketplace went live in November 1st of 2022. And we are about 60 days in and we have about 10 videos in the marketplace currently and we are continuously collecting and assessing videos so there might be more by the time you see this video but the solutions marketplace is available to you within the exchange just log in and look for the access now button for the solutions marketplace and then if you see something you want you want to buy it great or if you need help buying it that's when you can talk to someone like me or my team and we can help you with that as well. I hope the information that I've provided today has been really helpful or given you some thought on how to approach procurement or acquisition in this new technology world that we live in. Thank you very much for your time.